I'm currently in a transitional period. I'm excited to see who comes out of this shell. I'm in a cocoon right now. Yeah, I mean, people have been coming up to me like, you're the autistic bitch. And you're and like, like, yeah, and here is my sidekick, Smegma Girl. Smegma Girl? <laughs> the sick bitch is Smegma Girl. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's why Drake followed me. Um, Drake followed you? <laughs> oh like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Step up to the mic to introduce Daisy. That's the name, Paul, followed by the K.O. I ain't ever seen you, that's something I know. Yeah, Abigail is actually funny as fuck and weird as hell because I met her in real life one time and it was... Literally so strange. Like, it was actually crazy. I wouldn't know what to do. I, I, wouldn't, would, <laughs> I was on morphine because, like, I just had spinal surgery. That's so the only like, way. That's the only way we can meet. Yeah, so, I, like, I didn't care about her is the thing because mm -hmm. I was, like, on opioids and, like, in pain. <laughs> so, like, I my mom's, like, best friend from high school's daughter, like, wanted to go watch the Dance Mom auditions. And I yeah. was, like, it's weird to watch Dance Mom auditions as a yeah. random adult. Sarah. Yeah. And she was like, it'll be awesome. I love dance moms. And I didn't want to be like a bitch about it. So I was like, all yeah. right, I guess it's probably good for me to leave the house. So it was the first time I left the house after surgery. And then I was sitting in like a terrible chair the whole time. So I was like, this actually sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and like, these little girls are not that good, actually. Because yeah. they're like, really really young yeah. to, to start the show yeah and so then afterwards oh, they were doing like the... meet and greets and stuff yeah they were like three and I was like this <laughs> feels like I feel creepy like yeah. watching them and people Drake are like there. so which one's yours and I'm like none of them no. and they're like oh that's yeah. that, that gives me pause and I'm like it should I'm, I, all, I'm on drugs actually right now I bet Drake so. was there he probably was uh, <laughs> creeping around, he was hiding, just in the back, like, hiding back there, crawling on the floor <laughs> under the chairs. <laughs> I saw an AI photo of him like uh, climbing a wall like Spider Man, but he looked—he was like hissing, and it was just like he's like, "Give me all your children, give me all your kids." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the rap meme, honestly. It's, it's so so satisfying. I, I I am, and then now today I'm like, all right, like it's time for the Met Gala. It's it is actually time for the Met Gala. Oh, I yeah. love the Met Gala, and you're okay. Wait, so we're 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 recording. So one second, actually. Oh. One second, actually. <laughs> I was getting too deep into our into our fun. Thank you for coming on Days at Night. Would you like to tell people a little background on yourself before we have too much fun? Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Maddie Mays. I am a comedian. Uh, I write. I act a little. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> She's very funny. <laughs> um, you also have a background in costume design, which is why I, want, I was like, we got to get this intro in before we go full Met Gala because... I fucking loved the Met Gala Same. also. And like, I took sewing classes, but I was never in costume design. But when I was like little, I was like, I'm gonna be a designer. And then my design sucked, you know? But I still like love like, watching it. <laughs> I was actually, this is, I'm not making myself look good, but I was on a fashion flop list last week. What, what, what? It was the fashion first time I was list? ever on a fashion list. <laughs> and I was like, this is bullshit. I went to my first- <laughs> What were you wearing? <laughs> Dude, that was like the thing. They weren't even mad about my outfit. Cause like, yeah. I was, I went to my first- <laughs> I went to my first movie premiere ever. It was uh -huh. for like John Green, Turtles All the Way Down. His movie was really good. <laughs> and I was like, I have to like wear a good fucking outfit for this. Like I've never been to a movie premiere. I don't want people yeah. to be like, oh, influ influencers, tasteless as always, boring black dress. So I went like, I was like, this might flop. Yeah. And so I wore like a purple sequin mini dress that had like a turtleneck and long sleeves, but the back and the back of my arms are fully open. So like from the okay. back, it, I have like a scar down my whole back from scoliosis surgery. Okay. It was actually a moment. Like it was cool. It's pretty cool though. They didn't beef with the dress. What people cared about, and this was a fashion was flop list from scar. France. <laughs> no, I thought that was. This was a list in France also where I was like, how the fuck do you guys know I exist? Yeah. But they cared about my hair because I was running late and I was supposed to get like my hair done at like a dry bar or something. And I was like, whatever, fuck it. I'm just going to braid it. So I did yeah. a side braid. Yeah. By the time I got there, I have a hella layers because I was like wolf cut like a year ago. And so they were like falling out, but the braid was still intact. Yeah. It's just like the top layers were like sticking out. Yeah. So it was like a little more boho than yeah. I expected. But I was like, it's very Fiona Apple. It's fine. Yeah. So they were beefing with my hair. But like it was all in French, so I had to look up like what yeah, the fuck they were saying. Yeah, because like, I saw like <laughs> they flop, and I was like, <laughs> not they flop. I was like, that's uh, not good. That's, that's obviously bad. And yo. then it was like Daisy Foco <laughs> tried to braid, but it fucking sucked because it's falling out. And I was like, oh word, but my dress is fine. They're like, Ugh. 
I was like, okay, well, <laughs> that's fine. But I was like conflicted because it's objectively really funny to, lift to get lap. dragged in France being called Le Flop for <laughs> your first premiere ever. Like that's actually. But the, the outfit ate. But the outfit ate. The and outfit so I was like, it's fine. But you know what's fucked up though? What? It was a list of people where it was like top and flop. So the top next to me on uh-huh. either side, it was Zendaya and then Jennifer Aniston, which I was like, why the fuck am I on a list with Zendaya and Jennifer Aniston? Yeah. Who have like, like Zendaya has La Roche and yeah. she's Zendaya. Yeah. So like, yeah. even if it was just her, like she's naturally very tough. I bet she wore the exact same thing with the exact same hair. They would have been like, uh, les top. They'd like, be, they right? <laughs> because they'd be like, look at her. And I'd be like, totally agree. Totally. And when I did it, shit, you're right. I, she would I have like it. a, like a special effects scoliosis scar on yeah, the back. And I'd, I'd be like, like oh my God, oh she's my so God. brave. Why didn't I fucking think of that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so brave. Like she looks great. But yeah. they were like, Jennifer Aniston's hair is perfect. And. Daisy Foco's hair sucks. And I was like, she's fuck? had her hair perfected since the 90s. Yeah, yeah. This is bullshit. I'm still figuring it out over here. Yeah. But. She has a haircut that's called the, the, the It's like the Rachel. her hair. Yeah. 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 But like you, you do costume designs. So like, <laughs> this is like your shit. Like you, I should have got, I should have asked you. I mean, well, it's, it's similar, but different. I know, but I would rather go <laughs> costume. Like I would be like, pretend I'm a character. Who right. am I? I mean, in a way, what you wore is, would be a character. Like that's appropriate for any, like you that's literally true. everything anybody wears is just their character. That's, that's what's fun about costume design. Actually, when you said the whole back was open, I don't know why I thought of Lizzo when she had like the ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the ass thing. She just, t-shirt. She just cut the ass just out. just cut the ass out. That was actually kind of a vibe. No, it wasn't. It was, no. it was a vibe in that. No. It if, was crazy. If you if you pulled up to this premiere in a gilded t shirt and cut the ass out, and it was like, ooh, vibe, no, no. <laughs> People would be like, man, <laughs> that's a visual assault. That's <laughs> why did you show an ass? Just like, show an ass like, at the court side no. of a basketball game. That's true. Nobody asked for that. That's we already got bad. we already got basketballs. Like we don't need. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, <laughs> no shame, Liz. She got enough flack. She got enough flack. <laughs> yeah, but she she went for it, you know? And so then everybody was like, well, girl, like, at least you're on a list with them. And I was like, I mean, facts, actually. But yeah. still, you know, ideally you go and then everyone's like, who knew that she could eat like this? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> but like, no, that's not. <laughs> everyone was like, and we're starving. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> but with costume design, yeah. I always see people complain. Before we get into comedy, I just have to get all my costumes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always see people complain about the budgets because, mm-hmm. like, especially with like historical period pieces and shit. Yeah. Because I'm like a history gal. Yeah. yeah. There's like a huge like, like drop off mm-hmm. in like the quality, and I feel like it really affects like the world building, and it's like an underutilized component of that. A hundred. A hundred and thousand percent. Like, it's actually funny. Have, did you ever see The Favorite? Yeah. So they use denim for The Favorite. Really? Yeah. So the, the fabric that they use, they use denim because they couldn't afford to do historically accurate things. So they just use denim, which is like stiff enough fabric to kind of mimic yeah, the same things. That makes sense. But it's literally that. Like, I feel like costume design is something. And it's part of why I don't do it anymore because it is so underfunded and so overlooked yeah when the reality is is like costume designers make or break your film totally like that's just hands down like the great the great has really good costume oh my god it's and it makes a big difference like because it sells it yeah it sells it you have to if you're gonna do something like historical especially and that's what they always win like oscars always pick historical totally over and when devil wears prada snubbed fucking snub which is crazy because that actually like if you are a fashion girly which I know I have not sold myself as one but I do care <laughs> like the Devil Wears Prada is like peak costume design yeah. like yeah. like Andy's outfit and everything some like, of the most iconic It's it perfectly encompasses like who each person is 100% like the Chanel boots took me so long to realize that those are not leather pants. Those are boots. Yeah, they're boots. They go all the way all the, the fuck. way the fuck up. Yeah. I thought that they were pants imagine, until like this year. Imagine your boots are so high that they touch the bottom of your coochie. Could that you, would be terrible, but so so fucking no. good though. It looks yeah. so good on it. It's like an assless chat, but it's a boot. But like, it's a boot. It's a boot. Like yeah. And like Emily, <laughs> all of Emily's fucking outfits and like the red hair. Smoky eye. Yeah, all the, of it. It was like so like 90s like fucking L'Oreal cover girl it's just timeless chic. Yeah, yeah it's just like timeless fashion like even yeah. the poncho like I'm like yes like, I don't feel bad about wearing a poncho like you like, like she wore the fuck out of that poncho she wore the fuck out of that poncho and Miranda was like yeah she's like, the poncho and I so mean, you're like yeah same man Giselle Bunchen. she's yeah. just like she looks good and she's she supposed to be like Anna Wintour yeah and who's like an autistic icon is she really 
It makes yes, all. It, it makes, makes a lot of it sense. It makes so much sense. Her like dedication to only wearing flats at all times. Oh, as we speak, I'm wearing a ballet flat. Wow, that makes so much sense. Yeah, she's got so ASD. much attention to detail, bro. And okay. that's also that's why I hate when people <laughs> demonize my girl Anna Wintour. Does she seem like a terrible boss? Absolutely. Is she getting these girls places though? Also true. Yeah. But. Her being like super detail oriented, very routine fixated, yeah. needing the stuff to be in specific spots at all yeah. times. Yeah. It makes total sense. Yeah, that's and what dudes, what, guys, they're like, they see that in like American Psycho, which is like supposed to be a spoof, <laughs> but they see that and they're like, fucking iconic. Dude. And Anna Wintour is a real person, not a made up caricature. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, God, what a fucking controlling weird bitch. It's just like, dude, she just likes what she likes. She likes what she, she likes. She has her fixations. It. She doesn't even mask. Yeah. She just is that. She just is that. And her <laughs> fixation is just fashion and editorial. <laughs> and so people don't take it's it serious. It's a lip fixation. Yeah. Some people get <laughs> trains and some people get fucking, <laughs> fucking high fashion. High fashion. Like, <laughs> right. Oh. One makes way more money than the other. Oh, debatable. It's trains. Trains oh, make more. Oh, oh. <laughs> trains make more. <laughs> I was more. just about to say. I was like, yeah, we're not going to shit on train people. We're not trains gonna are on. a necessary cornerstone of the global. Without trains, we wouldn't we wouldn't be infrastructure. here. Infrastructure. Yeah, we would trains. Be here. Like, and that's why trains make, people always clown on just people for liking trains. Trains are consistent. They're always on time. They're crucial. And yeah. they're reliable. And they're an unsung hero of commerce. 100%. Makes complete sense. Train, they're very consistent. I'll yeah. tell you that. The trains You can consistent. count on them. Yeah. Except yeah. for in like New York, but like still though, you can yeah. relatively count on them. You can count it. You will be late if you are driving and there's a train crossing in front of you. And exactly. it's a, it consistently a great excuse. You have to yield to the train. Yeah. I, I mean, get why people fuck with trains. I fuck with trains. Trains are pretty cool. I mean, like I definitely like growing up, because I grew up in Texas. There would be trains. I grew up in Texas too. What part of Texas? What? I grew up in Austin. Up in Houston. Holy shit, I went to UH. Uh, oh, I almost went to U of H. I went to like theater things at U of H. I was in theater at U of H. Did you go to Thespian Festival? Dude, yeah. What? Were we there at the same time as Lizzo also who went to U of H? What was in band? Uh, was it just you, me, and Lizzo with all of our asses not out yet? Yeah, because we were in high school. <laughs> Thank God that <laughs> Drake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay wait well we can do, we don't have to <laughs> give all of our information <laughs> that's that's so wait like so but where did you go to high school and who is your what's your full legal what's your social what were you? <laughs> okay so my social okay do you guys know my credit card number not just the last yeah. four like all of it the, all of it yeah uh, the, all all nine yes Start. Like, <laughs> like I just say it in another. Yeah, exactly. But some of your personal information is that you're Blasian, correct? Yes. And you speak yeah. Japanese. I, don't, I, only speak, I just watch a lot of anime and I like Japanese. I am also yeah. a weeb and my boyfriend and I watch a lot of anime and actually he's a really big fan of your stand up. Really? Yeah, he showed, he showed me you a few months ago. Holy shit. He showed me your sketch about like. Uh, yeah. Dirty talking in in Japanese, which is a true story. I full I fully <laughs> fucking believe that that's a true story. Will you fucking will you summarize that bit for us, really quick? I mean, basically, okay. I'll just tell you the real story. Like, I I was hanging out with this dude, and like we would like talk about earlier like anime and stuff earlier in the night and he kept calling me Lil Naruto which was like okay because he didn't watch anime oh. he was like okay Lil Naruto and they're like <laughs> okay um, but then you know we got to business because I was like you know I was like young got out of a relationship and I was like you know I'm just trying to feel like I'm out here yeah let me just let me, I just, let me just figure LA. shit out maybe Lil Naruto's endearing yeah it, it feels not but maybe we'll get there to him you know I'm very much I can I can meet you in the middle yeah you know you're like we're getting We'll get there. You don't got it. I can maybe I can teach you a little bit. I don't know. But then we, you know, we got to business and there was a lot of weird things that took place up until that point. But then when it <laughs> when it got to that point, it was very like, and I just remember just being like, Nani. Like <laughs> I just being like, Ohio. Ohio guys. So just saying like saying hello. I'm like, literally, I'm like. Like, do you eat hamburgers? Like, and he's like, oh, fuck yeah, this is it. Pretty much. And I'm just like, yeah. And just like, oh my God. And I remember after that, I just remember just being like, yeah, dog, I don't know. I, I felt wrong for that. Because the thing is, I'm being part Filipino. Like, the Japanese did not treat the Filipinos well. No, I'm like, you're like, Yo, I'm, like, I'm referencing a colonial empire that yeah, oppressed my people. Yeah, in like a Making sexy way. Like, yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if this is... Uh, Fetishizing my oppressors? I mean, okay, well, you put it like that, like... I'm making it revolutionary. You're like, uh, like, you're like, actually, yeah. Yeah, like, like that is what I was doing. Imagine fetishizing, like, Nazism. 
oh god that's no. what the japanese did i know well it's because <laughs> they were closed off from the world for like 300 years and then they got the that whole nationalistic chip on their shoulders yeah and stuff, you know? yeah yeah a lot of people forget about that whole yeah it's thing. a really uh dark history there yeah wow. it really is and every time I, every time i talk about like world war ii or like other countries doing fucked up shit or war crimes people are like but what about fucking Japan? And I'm like, I have talked about Japan being crazy so many times. Yeah. Because they have the best PR of any country I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, they literally were like, no, like, we didn't do, like, war crimes. We're cute. We're so cute. Like, and then everyone was like, you are cute. Look at Chitan, Japan's favorite crazy mascot. Like, yeah. Have you seen that on Twitter? No, I have, actually. It's like, so weird because, like, it, no other country really has a mascot, I don't think. But also... Why are we all getting the same ads of Chitan? I don't know. Japan's crazy mascot. That's a good question. I think it's because, honestly, TikTok <laughs> knows that I eat that shit up where I'm like, that is fucking weird. But like, what is, like, I saw like literally with all the Drake Kendrick beef. Someone said, I wonder what Chitan, <laughs> Japan's crazy mascot says. <laughs> Someone said that. And I was just like, so we all, we all see this. We yeah. all see this. Did okay. you see the, the Japanese uh, rap that's been coming out with the... Sorry. No. Oh, it's some of no. it's good. Some oh, it's really good. Okay. I well, like that Metro Boomin was like, let's get the whole class involved. <laughs> Everybody start rapping. Can I get this cough out? Guess you can't get it out. <coughs> Don't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. I went to fucking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went to Avatar, like the blue people one, um, in like 2012. And I was like a third wheel because I didn't know my friend was bringing her fucking date. Third wheel comedy? No, oh, like okay. I was saying, an actual oh, third legitimate oh, third I, wheel to a movie date. I thought you went to the comedy place, and I was like, wait, no, that would be way more fun than no, what happened. For no, me. third wheel is like a, I love third wheel, um, but it's it can get a little crazy. Carry on. So yeah, sorry. no, it was like um, you know, like how everybody has like a super uh, boy crazy friend in in high school when everyone's like hitting puberty. There's always that that yeah. one girl who's like gotta yeah. like bang her boyfriend in class practically. That I, and I was, your boyfriend? No, her, her boyfriend. boyfriend. Oh, I was like okay. a third wheel for one of those dates at the movies. Oh, and I had like, I sat down and then I saw what was happening and I was like, oh my God. But I I had to like cough because I was like, so I like choked on my spit because I was so taken aback. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> yeah, like exactly like that. But it was like, the Avatar had been all hyped up of like, yeah. this is the movie of the fucking century. And it was and the it, first one, right? It, yeah, it was the first one. And so like, I was like, she's already like doing crazy shit in the front row of this theater. And then I was like, <coughs> <coughs> You're just and then people were looking at me like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. And so I was trying to hold it in and I was just yeah. quietly crying because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like suffocating <laughs> in the front row. And I had to get up and, oh. <laughs> So I had to get <laughs> up guys. and leave the theater and go choke outside. And I thought that out, it was like fine. <laughs> but I came back in and they were like no longer like fucking locked in on each other. And it was like a weird vibe in there, like a weirder than before. That's and so I cool. sat down and she was like, you were coughing so fucking loud in the hall that like the whole theater was like <laughs> talking about it. Like everyone was whispering. <laughs> they're like, is she okay? And they're like, is okay? she fucking dying out there? Like, and it went yes. on for like five minutes because I was holding it in for so long. That's so fucking funny. And then it started again where I was like, what? <laughs> like, I have like a cough panic response. And so then yeah. I went outside. Yeah, and you're like, and, like we just, just just left. That's Because so I was like, funny. this is like the worst moment of my life. And it's funny too, because like Avatar specifically seeing that in the front row is the most overwhelming experience. Because I literally sat in the front row for Avatar 2 with the 3D glasses. It was so overstimulating. It's a lot. It was so much. And I was like... So confused, my young eyes. I was like, "Is this, is this real, or is it yeah. generated? Like, what the fuck am I looking at?" Which well, like would never be a thought kids have now. Yeah. But like, I was like, "This yeah. is the most realistic shit I've ever seen." <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, "Is Jake Sully a real guy? Like, where is he?" Hey, wait, you, you, I you, hope so. You went that deep. I hope so. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I remember watching it too with my in the front row with my Filipino grandma, and you know she was there during World War II in fucking Philippines. So she don't know what the fuck. Mm -hmm. this, she'd never seen anything like this in her life. Right. And so like we're sitting with the 3D glasses and she's in the AWOS like floating around. She's like. Trying to touch him. Like, I love that. Like this. And she's, she's like, they keep moving further she away. Kept trying to, she kept trying to grab it. And we're like, we're like, grandma's a movie. Like, they're not there. She, I, 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 I she's like, it. they are. I can touch it. I can touch it. I was like, she's real as fuck with that though. She is. I yeah. love her chasing the whimsy of she, listen, AWOS. She, she loved that shit. I bet she, she did. Yeah. Who she doesn't. <laughs> Awa? Awa? Shit. The 
uh, white Americans in the movie Avatar that were trying to destroy the planet. I'm telling you. And then everybody, every single, you know what's crazy? I made a fucking TikTok <laughs> about this where people, I saw a, a slideshow that actually like enraged me online. Like I was like so motivated by it that I was like, I got to make a fucking video about this. Oh, really? Where <laughs> <laughs> they were like, people were like, maturing is realizing that Avatar was actually like a fucked up situation yeah. where they were like, killing the natives to take natural resources. No. And I was like, what the fuck did you think it was about? Yeah. What the fuck were you guys watching? Like, I what yeah. what what the fuck like what it's, literally what did you think this movie was? Literally. It's the same plot as Atlantis. It's the same plot as like every banger movie about colonization. Literally. Like what yeah. what 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 did you guys think like yeah. and they're like, "Well, I was a child back then." And I was like, "Right, so you don't have to like have the word imperialism and like colonialism, but like what, what did you like? You thought like were you things were happening. Yeah, like, who were you rooting what, for? What the hell was going on <laughs> for you? Like, what you weren't like sad when they played the sad music and everything yeah. was blowing up in slow motion. Yeah, what you know, like? Ooh, yeah, like you were like, oh damn, look at those guns. Like, what? What the hell was going on with you? I mean, I definitely be like, oh damn, look at those guns. I mean, they were crazy. They There's put that big, giant tree. Like, yeah, like one gun. Yeah, big tree. It wasn't cool, but like it was powerful. Like whoa, I was like, damn, they That's... can do that. But then the second one came out, and I was like, all right. Oh, I haven't, I haven't then, watched the second one. I haven't watched it either, but I saw everyone online. There's like some <coughs> sort of like skin resource that like keeps you young in the second one that they were going for. Oh. Yeah, and then everyone was like, honestly, this is toxic, but I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's fine. <laughs> like, you know. I feel like it's okay. And then I was like, I don't know if I can watch this second like, fucking movie because right, you guys are going to piss me off so much. They're just like mining Ozempic. Yes, the- basically. <laughs> they basically were. As, okay. Speaking of people like not fucking getting it. Yeah. <laughs> being, being, being a female stand up comedian. Yeah. That's got to be fucking tough, buddy. Dog. You're killing it. I'm just doing my best. Luckily, <laughs> I'm just good for you. It. But you're also like very commercially attractive. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times women in com- comedy get like put in a position where it has to be self deprecating. Yeah. And like your comedy is not self deprecating. Yeah. Yeah. You're just being funny. Thank you. Thank you. I just do my best, you know. It, it's weird because, like, comedy is, like, not a conducive place if you're an attractive person. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, like, every, immediately they assume that you're not going to be funny because when you're attractive, like, people just let you not be funny. Right. Like, people, they're like, I don't even care about that. They just want to fuck. Like, like and some yeah. people, like, you... you re- it's like a bonus. Yeah. They're like, oh, you got a little personality in there. Nice. Yeah, but, like, when you realize, like, oh, shit, I'm, like, bombing right now. Like, I'm not fucking funny. Like, it actually kind of makes you, like, okay, well, how do I... Step it up. Yeah, and, like, I don't know. I think it's just, like, committing to being yourself because there's certain comics, like, for example, like, Ali Wong mm-hmm. doesn't punch down on herself. Yeah. Like, is not self-deprecating. She'll yeah. talk about other shit, but, like, she's never punching down. Yeah, she's a good narrative crafter. Yeah. She creates good situational comedy. Yeah, and, like, men don't punch down on themselves. That's true. You know, to be funny. Like, you don't have to, like... And there's so many just, like, funny women in the world that just talk and it just are who they are. Mm-hmm. And it's hilarious. So it's kind of like, yeah, just like be that. Just like be yourself. Yeah. You know, you know, I, and I even think too, like when you try to be funny, it just doesn't work out the same way versus like, because, okay, so let me dial it back. Like I've been doing this for about, I'm coming up on two years. Mm-hmm. So to be where I'm at. Damn, for, only two years? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You've been bodying. What the fuck? Good Dude, for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So it's like, it's a little overwhelming. Because the internet is like, ah, like they're, they're, yeah. they're, they, half of it is very supportive and half of it is not. But like Patrice O'Neill said that if half the room likes you or like loves you and the other half fucking hates your guts, you're doing something right. Yeah. So imagine the room is the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> this is all right. But like, I'm just, um, I just love comedy. I'm like a student of comedy. It just makes me really happy. And like, I just like, the form of it because I have something that I always wanted to do and having done art and like going to school for art and costume design, Mm -hmm. I just am a student in Mm -hmm. general. And so I think comedy is like the same way where it's like, okay, but being funny and learning to be funny is a whole different thing. And it's honestly so difficult, but I kind of like it. (laughs) Yeah. Cause there's like, there's like rules to comedy that you can like break on purpose to be funny or adhere mm-hmm. to to be funny yeah there's like a lot more that goes into it i think than like the casual like observer would probably realize. yeah well sometimes even the easiest thing is the funniest thing yeah like oh, sorry my note what the fuck is going on with me right now like girl do whatever you got to do i think it's like the weather yeah. at least getting warm <laughs> uh-huh. i'm, I'm sick. sick 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But if that's the first thing that comes to your mind, right? Yeah. But we, we can break down comedically mm-hmm. why that was funny. Um, but <laughs> I think it's just, um, what the fuck was I saying? You were saying that like sometimes the simplest thing is the funniest thing. Yeah. And I don't know. I think um, for women in comedy, we're put under so much pressure to be so funny because they're so, we're so used to men saying that we're not. Yeah. And so there's so much pressure to actually be funny. Mm -hmm. And when you're also attractive, like conventionally, there's a lot of things against you that's like, you can't be both. So like I tend to dress down a little bit and be a little bit more modest in comedic Mm -hmm. spaces because it's like, I don't want that to be too distracting. Right. In order so people actually listen to what I'm saying, at least right now. Right. You feel like you, once you have that sort of like ethos built in. Oh yeah. You can build up to. Oh, I'm doing. Just being organic, being like, being the way that you would naturally be. Oh yeah, no. When, when things, and I have it built to a certain point, I will have costume changes. I'll have reveals. You're still building up the trust that you are going to be funny. Yeah, well. It's not that I don't think I'm not. I just know that when I am able to get to the point where can I I can articulate the things that I really want to talk about, mm-hmm. then I can use the theatrical things that I've learned to assist in that comedically. Yeah, theater kid at heart. Oh my god, love that. Uh, oh fucking god. Listen, that's yeah. where our true artistry is born. I know. Out we're that's me. Listen, people, theater gets a bad rep, but you know <laughs> it involves. Visual art, because yeah. there's the set pieces so, and there's architectural elements as well. Yeah. Yeah. It involves music. Yeah. It involves lighting, yep. which is a very overlooked, super important component of art. It over, it involves dance. It mm-hmm. involves positioning. It literally involves like any possible artistic angle that you could conceptualize down to coding. Yeah. Okay. Literally. Down programming. to coding and programming. Yeah. 100%. It gets all of that in one place. And there's very few areas of life that can do that. Yeah. And so that's why I think like a lot of times people will be like, you forget so-and-so celebrity was a, a thespian and it makes I sense. I mean, if you look at like Nick Kroll and John Mulaney, yeah. the way that they're just pure fucking theater kids, like the way that you watch Big Mouth and everything that they've Big created Mouth. there, it's it and it's just all theater kids. It is. It's every single one of these people that just the way that they comes from theater. But the thing is, I didn't, I was an actor in theater. Right. I was a costumer yeah. <laughs> that wanted to be an actor, but then also realized later, oh, I kind of like the whole shit. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I think that's even too, where it's like, it's, yeah. But I think in the long run, when I get to the point where like, I am given and trusted enough uh, to have an hour worth of people's time, and like be able to conduct like yeah. a whole show. I want to be like a <laughs> fucking. You want to be a real fucking a show. show. Like I want to. I want to be fucking. I want to be costume changes and. Uh, That'd be sick. I would love that. It was just. I just, just want to make something really, but something that also is fun and. I don't know. I like shows because I, I mean I love pure stand up. I do, and I want to be able to master that. But I think to be able to also incorporate all the other things that I yeah. love would be so much fun. I feel like if you can master like the most stripped down version of comedy, mm-hmm. then naturally you can add as much shit as you want on top of it and have it be just as effective. Yeah. Well, even watching like the Cat Williams special um, from the festival, mm-hmm. like him incorporating memes yeah. into it. Like Hannibal Burris did that, um, his Miami Nights one where he was like showing videos of him like and showing the things. Like mm-hmm. stand up nowadays doesn't have to just be speaking. Yeah. However, if you can just get up there and talk for an hour and then later on add the things, then it's like, okay, yeah. like Yeah, then it's like you know that with no budget, you can kill it. And with the biggest budget, you can kill it. You can kill it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I just think it's like a fun medium. I feel like there's so many things that you can do now. There's this one comic. I forget his name. He's this Latino comic who will just take like weird shapes and will explain their whole personalities oh. and it's very neurodivergent humor. I like that. It's so good. I love that actually. <laughs> he'll be, it'll be like a yellow, like oblong shape. He goes, he owes some money on his taxes. <laughs> um, and he'll just like explain like all these little things. It's like, but he doesn't like his mother-in-law, but he'll still give her gifts on Easter. And it's just like, what the uh, fuck are you talking about? And you're like, but also, but yeah, he yeah. totally is. Like he is that kind of shape. 100%. I forget his name, but he's so funny. But like, that was a way of seeing comedy from a way that I, I've never like seen. A really it. creative angle. I've just never yeah. seen anybody do that before. Or like yeah. Morgan Jay doing the musical thing. Like, yeah. oh my God. It's like, there's so many things you can do now. They're just so cool. And That's I'm like, true. why not incorporate Even like Inside was like kind of like empty yeah. for comedy because also like it wasn't only funny. Yeah. It was kind of sad. Yeah. It was kind of really sad. Yeah. A lot of people had an existential crisis, but also it was still, it followed like 
the comedic pattern and pacing that like any stand-up show would have. Yeah, but, but then like visual aids. Then you take that, or if you watch like Ali Sadiq, if you've never watched Ali Sadiq, one of my favorite comics, he's gonna be here this week, uh, and I'm very excited to watch him. But he also from Houston. Hey. Um, he's a storyteller, and he just sits down. He he'll start his set just sitting down, and mm-hmm. he'll just start with, "Life is crazy," and then he'll do this th- big picture thing and then he'll take you all the way through his like life stories wow. and it's amazing Dude, and I he doesn't need anything that. but himself in a chair I've never seen his he's amazing I'll send, okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, send it to you I'll send it to you I will watch it he's so that sounds good. so cool well cause he he went to prison when he was younger cause for he said he calls himself a, a street pharmaceutical salesman uh, uh, <laughs> so you know what that means uh, but his dad was and his first special it wasn't his first but it was called Domino Effect and he talks about how he became that and throughout the story he introduces different guns uh-huh. that came into his life and then they gradually get bigger as the story wow. progresses it's just it's that's such a good motif i know it's just beautiful wow, it's amazing that's really that's really really cool yeah it's so inspired it's just so like oh like to take but it's all of his own personal experiences but then comedically he can do these things so it's just like i feel like the best stand-ups just know how to be themselves yeah and they just fully are just because if you're not afraid to be yourself and i think that authenticity just shines through it does yeah i think that so when you cut up your clips and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. like you do well on tiktok I think it's because also a very neurodivergent community. <laughs> yeah, me too. All my followers. My followers think yeah. I have ASD. I'm in the middle of getting tested. For yeah. That, so yeah. we could have that in common. Ooh. Yeah, let me see. We'll have to compare results. I know. <laughs> I took my intro test and then it, I, depending on your opinion, either passed or failed. <laughs> I'm like, what you Let's have so. Yeah, they were like, you got to get more testing for sure. And I was like. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I was like, well, uh, and then they were like, it's like four thousand dollars, and I was like, what? Yeah, and so I've been putting it off because of that. But yeah, it runs my family on my dad's side, so it's it's probably likely. But my yeah. followers, since I just do info dumps online, were like, have you considered yeah. that that could be you? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I have considered that pretty yeah. much always. So. Well, it's just funny how like. And the reaction in different platforms to that specific video was very different. Really? TikTok people were being very supportive, Naturally. obviously. Very you know. positive towards ASD on TikTok. Yeah. And that's it, like, it, it did so well. I mean, it did well across the platforms, but that one specifically, they were very like, yeah, like, oh my God, I feel like, so seen. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then with the, like rocks in your pocket, fuck yeah, me as fuck. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh my gosh, yeah, literally, like, I got rocks yeah. my back as we fucking I was going to ask if you had any rocks. Yeah. I found, afterwards. I found one on the way and I can show you. Um, but, uh, then like Instagram was like half and half. Yeah. And so some people were like, okay, like, uh. and then Twitter ate me the fuck up. Really? <laughs> they ate me up on Twitter. And I think it's because like, also too, like being mixed. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and do like the tragic mulatto conversation. Cause I think that's uh, annoying, but there is something too about like, um, within the black community about like, and I think we're breaking these molds. Mm-hmm. But like, and I grew up in the South, so it's like I have my ties to like what I am and knowing who I am. But I think like when you're weird and you're all and you're different, like there's, I think they're just now starting to get used to Mm -hmm. people who are black identifying being fucking weird, even though they've been fucking weird. Right. But I think there's different layers to it now. And I think it's because it's so much and so many different types and subsects that it's like, okay, bitch, like we can't. Yeah, it's, it's be, just like a lot to take in all at once. And it's also like, you can't be all the fucking things, bitch. Yeah, and it's You like, can't be mixed, autistic, uh, uh, bisexual, da 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 Like, you can't be all the fucking things. You're like, but what if I am? What if I am? Like, what if I'm like the ultimate fucking mixed person? Like, like I'm what? sorry that I have so many titles. <laughs> and it's just like, but also even too, what's funny is, it gets to a point where it's like, I don't even, I'm just going to be me. Like, I don't even care yeah. about labels anymore. You're like, the list is too long. Yeah, Who and it's just like, anymore? it gets to a point where I'm just like, I think also too identifying too heavily within any particular label, you begin to limit yourself to the possibilities of yeah. the rest of anything, any other experience. Yeah, you lock yourself in. Yeah, I was talking about this on like a different episode with Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he was saying he doesn't like to be isted because I asked if he identifies <laughs> as a nihilist. Yeah, and he said that once you ist yourself, that you're stuck with within certain confines, and it limits yeah. your creativity. And you you also create this situation where you assume if somebody says that they're a certain thing that Mm -hmm. you know what the shape of that person is now Mm -hmm. instead of just like waiting and seeing what unfolds yeah so i totally get exactly what you're saying yeah well we just i think also too like when the rest of the world is boxing you in 
well, you shouldn't box yourself in either. Right. Because then, you know, you find yourself uh, not giving yourself space to grow into somebody that you could be or allowing yourself to sort of like let life take you down whichever which path yeah. that is, I don't say intended, but. Whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah. Like Do you have a lot of phases? Yes. Me too. <laughs> I love a good phase. And I love, I love a bitch who has a lot of phases because you know what? Phases. Anybody who can master the pivot like that and yeah. just try different shit. What what a fun way to to do yeah. shit! Like yeah. I love trying new shit and being like, is this me now? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Did Maybe you like Bowie? Dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh, master of master of a pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Master of pivot. And look how fun that is. Yeah. So many eras, so many costumes, reinventing. Such yeah. So cool. Yeah. I'm currently in a transitional period. I'm excited to see who comes out of this mm. shell. I'm in a cocoon right now. Hell yeah. I'm, I've been kind of. That's what my friend was telling me that I, I dress like a cool eighth grader. You do, actually. Uh, thank you. Um, That's a great fucking thing to be. Which is debatable. Uh, oh, it is. I don't care what anyone says. It absolutely is. Thank you. I think that's why Drake followed me. Um, Drake followed you? <laughs> oh, my God. Of course, Drake followed you, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was... And it, it blew up on... That blew up on Twitter also. Did it? Yeah. Yeah, because I bet people check his following. Yeah, well, it showed that he liked the post and it was the middle of the beef and it was uh it was the middle of the beef it was like a week it was like two weeks ago yeah it was very like whoa bro like leave me alone you're like not right now i'm like you got other fish to fry right like where, where's kate right now that's I, I if he like i'll be like oh that would be sick like, yo guys leave me alone <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like i saw so my favorite like literally like what do you want me to say like i have nothing to say you're like, like what what like, do it? I get in the booth? Like, do I, do I do it? Like, guys, please stop fighting. Like, stop fighting. Guys, like, stop. <laughs> then you would really be a cool eighth grader. Guys, stop. <laughs> that's literally, that's the most eighth grade thing is to. To break up two guys boys who don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, that's the, yeah. that's the twilight. That's the twilight core. Are you a twilight? Yes, of course. Okay, team Edward. Or Look at how I'm dressed right now. I know. You're so bellicose. I know. Uh, uh, like Liar. <laughs> you're like, I know. The amount of fan fictions. The amount of, oh. Uh. Did you read um, Midnight Sun? Yes, of course I read Dude, okay. I, of course I read Midnight Sun. Soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight Sun is one of the best books ever written. And yeah. I love books and it's because <laughs> people didn't fucking read it because they're like this yeah. is a cash grab but I'm like no you guys are forgetting because for anyone who doesn't know Midnight Sun is Twilight from Edward's perspective exactly exactly Edward can read fucking minds yeah and so you get to hear everyone's internal monologue and it's so fucking funny yeah. like it is a literally irreplaceable yeah. literary gold and <laughs> it clears up some things because well, like Bella's boring is what everyone fuck. complains about yeah but Twilight's from her POV and she thinks she's fucking boring so that's why she seems boring all the time it's everybody but Bella exactly and Midnight Sun you see that Bella's actually very charismatic and pretty witty and people like her for a fucking reason. Yeah. And she actually has way more of a personality yeah. than like you would think. And also Edward <laughs> thinks Charlie's dumb as fuck. Because <laughs> he yeah. can't, he can only hear like some random words in his head. So he thinks he has like no thoughts. And yeah. that's like so fucking hilarious like and <laughs> unnecessary of Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> you know what I just realized? Is it? He probably has half of what Bella has. That's I, that's what it's supposed to be. But, yeah, but he just sounds fucking stupid. But it stupid. just sounds like, like <laughs> Edward's just like, what is this guy, a fucking idiot? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's also the way Edward is like always controlling his urges. Yeah. He ran across the country to get away from her smell. So funny. If I, if my future husband doesn't have that type of obsession over What's me. What's the point? Obsessed. You need to be obsessed. obsessed. Bare minimum. Straight Bare minimum. Up. I need. So good. Yeah. So good. And like also yeah. fucking everyone's like, Edward watches Bella while she sleeps. He's a fucking creep. And Midnight Sun is just him being like, God, this is so fucking weird. <laughs> Everything I'm doing is so fucking weird. Isn't I need so- to stop. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Like it is so likable. And like I just wish people yeah. would put some fucking respect on Twilight. Honestly, I think people, this is what I learned in the past two weeks of my experience with the internet. People are just going to do what people are going to do. And they're going to feel how they want to feel. And they're going to say whatever the fuck they want to say. But the reality is, is you know your truth. That's a fact. And <laughs> you I know, know your that truth. Twilight is good. Yeah. Yeah. And Wait. that's what matters. Edward or Jacob? Answer the question. It's Edward. Obviously. obviously. It's obviously it Edward. Never it was never going to be Jacob. It was never going to be never, Jacob. Never. The guy I, they almost casted Jacob, though. Have who, you seen Drake? that guy? No. Have you seen that guy, though? Which one? There was like a guy who was actually native who was supposed to play Jacob. 
And, and they just got a tan white man. Yeah, they did. Uh, he's <laughs> Dutch. <laughs> but like, he was actually hot as fuck. And they casted him. And then they uncasted him because he wouldn't cut his hair because fucking duh. Yeah. Culturally, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. Not to cut your hair. Stephanie Meyer should have known that since she fucking wrote about this entire culture. Right? Yeah. But yeah, so he's in Twilight, but he's just like in the background when they're at Love Push. And they're, he's like, when they walk up to Bella and they're like, hey, what's up? And they're like, the cones don't come here. He's oh. the guy who's like, the cones don't come here. He's an absolute fox. Oh, and he, he was, was supposed to be. He would have he would have changed the game. Right? I still would have been Team Edward because like, duh, immortality. Get yeah. your fucking immortal bag. But it would have made me more conflicted. I think as an adult, you realize that Jacob probably might have been the better option. For sure. But, Aside from him not listening to Bella's boundaries, but definitely a better option. I think the better option is she should have just went to college and like gone and like. Straight up and just, <laughs> just married like, like a fucking Washington state millionaire. Yeah, or like but, went and lived her life and then came back to Edward and was yeah, just like, okay, true. yeah. like not, Where's he going to go? Yeah, like you want to be a vampire so bad, bitch. Like relax, you're 18. A lot of people are like <laughs> Edward and Bella after vampirism wouldn't have lasted for more than two years. No. And I completely agree. Yeah. She just asked for sure. She's like, yeah. I'm immortal now. We have Renesme. Fuck you. Yeah. All of the weird obsessive relationships you have going like in from like beginning of college or late high school are all fucking weird and yeah, smelly. So bad. And smelly <laughs> is right. And like, like the couple that you see in the hallway that are like their heads are like smegma. Like, yeah, straight up. And it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't last. So why? Wow. <laughs> it doesn't last. So that was a the real, so hold on, hold on. <laughs> That was way too loose of the term, Smegma. <laughs> you said that shit mad loose. I'm sorry. I'm you excited said, about yeah, Smegma so much recently. I'm like desensitized. You played Cards Against Humanity and you're like, oh, did, were you one of those people that that's when you learned what Smegma was? And you're like, ooh, Cards Against, what is Smegma? Google not- Smegma and you play with somebody else. And you're like, yeah, did you get the Smegma card? <laughs> Am I ooh. reading you to filth right now? You are. I'm like, <laughs> no, I like, I... <laughs> I was there's a guy who didn't wash his dick for 30 years <laughs> that's why he's left his smegma turned into a rock and they had to surgically remove it and it smelled so bad they had to evacuate the office <laughs> and like I did a cold open he had a smegma on TikTok stone. he had a smegma stone stones <laughs> stones <laughs> And like I talked about it on TikTok and everyone's so mad at me still. It's been two weeks and everyone is calling me Smegma Girl because <laughs> Okay, I'm thinking about what I said. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I, I was like, I just oh. realized like you're actually right. Like I, that is who Smegma I am. Smegma girl, Smegma girl. That's my current phase. Yo. Yeah. I mean, people have been coming up to me like, you're the autistic bitch. And you're and like, like, yeah, and here is my sidekick, Smegma Girl. Smegma Girl. <laughs> the sick bitch is Smegma Girl. <laughs> Yo, dude, I would have kept my stones. Yo, could you imagine making he, the doctor? He made him. his own rocks. The doctor kept them. He made his own rocks. That's actually kind of a dream of. Yo, my mom, my mom's passed some kidney stones, and I'm like, Did you you save get, them? and I was like, no, she isn't. I think she. Thought, I think they had too trauma. Apparently, they hurt. So like, yeah, they hurt really bad. Have you had? <laughs> no, but like, I heard. I heard um, from men. <laughs> unfortunately, you gotta pass a stone through your urethra, like with a girl. Like we're used to passing things, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we're running out of time. <laughs> so Maybe it starts here. Maybe we do another hour and it starts here. <laughs> we have to end on Smegma. Yeah. So if there's anything that you want to plug, now would be the time. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing smegma related. I'm just smegma not, tag. I, I, um, yeah, hopefully. Um, I mean, I got shows. Uh, if you follow my Instagram at Maddie Mays, M A D D I M A Y S, S like smegma. Uh, <laughs> there you go. You can see all my stuff there. Um, I got fun things. <laughs> I I'm sorry. Yo, he weathered his own rocks in his dick folds because of the Yeah, a ton. Yeah, they're huge. They're also, they're huge. I will show you a picture after this. Yeah, I would, you would love that. I would like you to see exchange it. rocks, actually. Well, Thank you so much for coming on the show. Have a new year. <laughs> Please come back on again. I would love that. I would, I would love that, that too. Uh, we'll have to come with the, we'll start, we'll start where we left off. We'll start with Smegma. Yeah, I would like to see where this <laughs> <laughs> we'll just the topic bodily stones <laughs> and that's a wrap <laughs> 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 <laughs>
okay, I <laughs> Wait, he really had some Hagos stuff. Fly, sting like a bee. Step up to the 